of this Western Conference Final. Westbrook for three, yes. Westbrook on the pullback, yes. He has had a sensational second half. Westbrook out of the backcourt, and a travel is called. Over the call a timeout. The Warrior bench was furious. What happened on that play? I just played till I heard a whistle. We got a W the first game one, but there's a lot of basketball to be played. It is off to team two. Off to Curry, left side, open on a screen for three. Got it! Ahead, deflected by Westbrook. Gets made oh. by Iguodala, who's tripped up in midair, spins up a prayer, and it's answered. The steal of three on one. Curry for three. Yes! The Warriors... Coming in in a must-win scenario, evening up this series at what a piece. We've got to wait two more days, a pivotal Game 3 in Oklahoma City on Sunday night. And in Games 1 and 2, it's really been a tale of second halves. Both teams outscoring each other 61 to 42. Stephen A., which result do you think is more likely to happen, though, in Game 3? No, neither. I think what will happen is it will be a replica of Game 1, except... Golden State would win instead of lose. It'll be relatively tough, hard fought, but they'll play better in the second half and they'll win, but it won't be by a blowout. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be a, a go OKC win, in my opinion, in game three. It'll be Golden State, but Golden State won't win the way they won in game two. I don't see Russell Westbrook shooting five or 14 and scoring just 16 points um, in game three. I don't see Kevin Durant attempting five shots in the second half in game three. Um, I just see them being a bit more uh, uh, prolific. I definitely think they're going to make their presence be known. And, if they're, and, Skip, if I had to pick what kind of game this will be, it will be similar to what happened last February when Steph Curry dropped 46 and he hit that shot uh, from 35 feet uh, as, as the game wind down. I think it'll be something akin to that. That's what I see happening in game three. By the way, in that game you speak of at Oklahoma City, the middle game of the three that they played during the regular season, Oklahoma City led by as many as 12 in that fourth quarter and led by five in overtime. Pretty impressive. Still couldn't close yeah. the deal thanks to that little number 30 for Golden State, that unanimous MVP. Kevin Durant did turn the ball over too much in that game also and turned it over obviously too much in game two the other night at Golden State. So I have a couple of qualifiers here. I'm going to say it again. If Steph's swollen elbow becomes an ongoing issue, all bets are off. I just have to say that. I don't know enough about it. They say it's fine. I'll have to go with it. You're going completely fine. I also want yes. to throw this out. I got to give Billy Donovan and Mo Cheeks a lot of credit because massive credit. Hey, the, the the adjustments they keep making first against my Spurs and, and then even in the second half of game one for a rookie NBA head coach, Billy Donovan's he, he's pulling some levers there in the, you know, at halftime in the locker room or even between games. So I'm impressed. I, I feel that, that they could change the balance of power in the series with their coaching. But I'm going to say this again. Golden State is favored by two and a half points by the odds makers, the people who know, going into game three at Oklahoma City. I also throw the caveat in, my Spurs were favored by an opening two and a half going into game six at Oklahoma City, and that didn't get them anywhere. But that's... That's the sign of respect that Golden State deserves to get. I'm going to say it again. Golden State is a little better than Oklahoma City. They proved it three times in the regular season. They proved it in the first half of game one, in which they led by 13. And they proved it big time in both halves of game two. They led by eight at halftime. They won the second half by 19. They won the game by 27. So to me... Golden State is good enough, if you will, better enough than Oklahoma City, to me, to, to win both games at Oklahoma City. Another good sign for Golden State on the plus side of the injuries. I don't know if you noticed, Stephen A., but Bogut looked pretty good in the second half the other night. He did. He looked he did. spry. He, did. he, he didn't look like his groin or his knee were ailing him or slowing him quite like it did at the first of the game when he looked a little limpy. And do not underestimate how valuable 
Bogut is to their defensive scheme to keep one Russell Westbrook away from the rim. And Russell was having a hard time in the third quarter getting to the rim because Bogut was there. Bogut can bang with Steven Adams. Bogan can hold, but Bogut can hold his own in the lane against that muscle that Oklahoma City has because when Cantor is in there with Adams, it's just, just a lot of height and, and long arms and big bodies. So he's, he's essential to this, and it, it will help both Steph and Bogut that they have a very odd four days to get ready yeah. for, for game three. I don't know where that came from, but it's good for them. I think that's big advantage for Golden State. So now it comes down to the pride of Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. And, and again, the, the one mistake Golden State has made in this whole series so far is that they took their foot off the gas in the third quarter of game one. And especially, as you point out, they took their foot off Russell Westbrook. What changed the whole series? Russell Westbrook, as he is fully capable of doing, went into full-on attack mode and scored 19 points in six minutes from the seven-minute mark to the one-minute mark of the third quarter. That's it, man. It turned the whole series around at that moment. It, it allowed them to be in position to steal that game. And then they literally stole it at the end with a glaringly missed call that took the ball out of the hands of the deadliest three-point shooter in NBA history and Steph Curry with 17 seconds left. But Steph was one for six in the fourth quarter. He was one for five from three. They went one for ten from three. I'm, I'm going to call that anomaly. I'm going to call it aberration. I don't think it will happen quite like that again. As great as I think Durant and Westbrook will be on Sunday night, we both think they'll win that game. And I'll go out on the limb again. I think they're fully capable of winning both games in Oklahoma City now that they've gotten untracked. Yeah, that's where you and I part ways. I believe it will be a split in games three and four, and they will go back to Golden State for game five, tied 2-2. Two -two. That's what I believe will happen. That is what will go down. All I know is we will be watching. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And speaking no of Sundays, someone thinks an NFL, uh, an NFL fan thinks that uh, Aaron Rodgers is ruining the game on Sundays. Yes, Aaron Rodgers, that bad man ruining football. I'll tell you why after the break. So, a Wisconsin man wrote into the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel with some harsh comments for that bad man. Richard Klatt wrote that Aaron Rodgers is ruining football with his hard counts he uses in an effort to get opponents to jump offside, and he hopes young athletes aren't being coached to play this way. Skip Bayless, your reaction wow. to this. Finally, an objective Packers fan. I love it, Stephen A., a Packers fan who, who has the audacity, has the courage to call out Aaron Rodgers. And this point is yet another reason. Aaron Rodgers is a sad man. Oh, I said it with an S. Stop a sad it. man. If you're the greatest quarterback in football, why do you have to resort oh. to tricking the defense to convert third downs? So you, you draw the defense offside to convert third and five with a five-yard penalty. You trick them. You, you, you sort of play between the, the lines on the rules here in the gray area of the rules. Mm. And then occasionally you're able to throw touchdown passes yeah. only because you draw them off sides, the flags fly, but you go ahead and finish the play while everybody's kind of looking around like, well, we, we yeah. were off sides, and he throws another 40-yard. Yeah, because you know about touchdown. quarterbacks in gray yeah. areas. Yeah, oh, you know yeah. some that do that. Oh, you support? what are you talking yeah. about? Sorry, Stephen yeah. A. <laughs> Go uh, ahead. How many touchdown passes? I don't know the stats, but what's, what's Aaron throwing, like 15 in his career, where the defense just quit on the play because they were off, drawn off sides? It is pretty pathetic, and I appreciate, what's this gentleman's name? Clap. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Way to go, wherever you are Richard, in Big Ben, Richard Wisconsin. Clapp. Richard Clap, Big Ben, Wisconsin. Way to go for your courage. <clears throat> for Aaron Rodgers' career mm -hmm. thus far, Here we go. been a starter since 2008. Yeah. Career numbers. Molly, yep. are you listening? I'm listening. 32,399 yards. 257 touchdowns. 257? Just 60. 257 touchdowns. Wow. 
just just 65 interceptions, a completion percentage career of 65, <laughs> and has <sighs> has a quarterback rating of 104. And some ignorant Wisconsin fan. Ignorant. That clearly has nothing. <laughs> that, that, that clearly well has nothing. Hold on, hold on. That was insightful. Hold on, that clearly has nothing better to do with his life. Okay, would sit here and nitpick, nitpick one of the greatest quarterbacks we have ever seen in Aaron Rodgers. Tell that man that you know, Skip. When I was in college at Winston, before I went to college at Winston Salem, yeah. I was in high school in Queens, New York, yeah. by, at Thomas Edison High School. I was actually studying electrical installation. And there was a professor there by the name of Mr. Burgervoy. My boy Jeff would tell you we were classmates together at Thomas Edison. He didn't use the word shut up. What he said was shut up. S H A L L O P. Shut up. Okay. Yeah. That's, where, that's where Shut up. Okay. That's where that's where that's what Mr. Burgervoy <laughs> said to ridiculous asinine idiotic individuals who clearly have nothing better to do with their time than come up with something as asinine as this. To Stephen A., let me say to this Wisconsin man, shut up. Nobody wants to hear it. Keep quiet. I Go to Lambeau it. Field eight times a year minimum. Enjoy the greatness that you will see because it's rare that you'll see it, okay? And just live with that and enjoy it. Peyton Manning, doesn't didn't trick people throughout his career. No. Tom Brady no. doesn't trick people throughout no. his career. Tom oh, Brady follows all it. the rules. That Come is on, just Stephen not A. true. Just ignorant. He does. He, I mean, he this is what we do now. This is what we do now. Some dude in Wisconsin. Some dude in Wisconsin. Probably yeah. probably skip. Some dude resembling that dude from uh, from Aaron Rodgers discount double check commercial with the yeah. cheese that yeah. on his head. You think it's right that guy? Yeah. Or I don't think that article. guy was capable of and, writing this. And that's what this we do. We give, we give him air time. We give a man yeah. time. I want to see Skip Taylor Lambo leap. Yeah, Nobody Lambo. wants to hear that. Wait, no, so please. you are avoiding the crux of this what? gentleman's argument. What? I want to hear uh, you respond right to I am. how many times right Aaron Rodgers tricks the defense. Oh, Why does he uh, have to resort to tricks? My time. Is it, does that stop mean my time. he's insecure? Oh, that, does that mean he's not as great nonsense. as you always say he is? No, a Wisconsin man right about the snap, the, 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 the yeah. quick snap count. What, what oh, message really? is that <laughs> sending really? the kids? We got millions oh, of people on Twitter who deserve more time in this gray area of the rules. Trick them. That's the only way to Please. succeed. Way right, to go. Whatever. Aaron, hey, whatever. Send that message. How was the lasagna yesterday when you taped on the table? Oh, it was, pretty, it was pretty fly. Yeah? Mario, when Mario Patelli, Michael Simon, Carla, all, all of them. They loved it. It was beautiful. They said the lasagna was delicious. I might have cooked for y'all, Molly, but Skip just ticked me off. No, I'm not blessed with my lasagna. He likes steamed lasagna. chicken and broccoli. I will gladly no, eat no your lasagna, lasagna with carbon. No, lean, mean fighting machine.